Hey folks, welcome back. So today I thought maybe we create another track in, inside Bitwig Studio. I think it's the best way to just show how you go from zero to something in Bitwig just to inspire people to actually do something instead of, you know, going down to the grid and getting lost in complexity. So maybe first here I increase here the size of Bitwig Studio. And we start with the poly grid, of course, because I really like to have some kind of background uh, stuff going on in the scale of the uh, of the track. So here I'm taking a poly grid, and we maybe start here with the pitches module, which gives us some some notes. And I put here some notes into a scale, which is the D sharp minor scale, of course. You all know it. You all like it. And so let's define here some 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 notes. Okay, so now we hook this up here to the oscillator, of course. Dial this up, and the precord is off now. And also we want to change here the phase input. So we use a phase in, connect these two, and disable this. So we have exactly the same um, thing as before. And then we use a merge uh, and we connect this here also so we can switch between different inputs here. Maybe we increase here this to three and we use a mirror here so we can switch between different phase signals and maybe what else um, let's let's use a reverse here. So we want to reverse or play this in reverse. So then we use a value here on top and just switch between the inputs and maybe go here to interpolation to nearest so we can have a stepped switch. When we switch it to mirror, we can see it's now playing back and forth because we have a mirror in there. And the reverse thing also plays this in reverse, of course. So we have three options here how to play this, right? And then we maybe take this one here, put this over there and also connect these two and maybe use triggers, trigger modules here, duplicate these three times and to dial in of course your different trigger sizes, maybe six, seven, maybe nine, something odd because I like to have it groovy and to use a, a clock quantizer here and another triggers module, whoops and connect these two and let's let's uh, synchronize this to 16 nodes here and now we can switch between different different triggers here and also different phase signals phase input signals at the same time okay and then we use this of course to uh, trigger yeah, the output of the or trigger the envelope actually Okay, so now that we have this, uh, we also need probably here a sample and a hold to get rid of these glitches between the nodes, these uh, bends, these note bends. Um, let's listen to this. Uh, we also maybe need a transpose on octave here. We want to probably change the octave. Uh, Okay, that's also nice. And what else can we use? Um, maybe we put here also a chorus in there, chorus plus, and switch it to eight voices. Let's listen to this. It's more like in unison. So it's a bit of diffusion, kind of, you know, diffused signal. Maybe you put this here also in unison. 16 voices and... Maybe it would be nice to have a filter here. Maybe we go for a MOOC filter. And we use a different envelope here. 
and um, open up here the filter but we do this instead of with the uh, with the modulator out here we just take the signal out and put this here into the cutoff modulation amount Okay, so we are at 110, maybe we slow this down to not 66, um, 85, something like this. Okay, so now that we have this, we switch the pulley grid here into voice stacking mode. Three voices because we have here three options. We use the voice stack modulator. And for the first voice, we stay on the first thing here. The second voice goes, goes to the second input. So let's modulate this. And also here to the second input. Um, maybe we switch to the second voice also one octave higher. And the third voice one octave lower. And maybe we slow this down, so we select your pulley grid and go to device length and maybe choose two. Uh, maybe disable also the pre-chord for the, for the envelopes. So now that we have this, we probably want to create some kind of reverb. So, um, or we, we don't want to create a reverb, but I create a reverb. I pretty much like it instead of just using a default reverb or maybe use a super massive nowadays. So I'm going for FX grid here. And inside of X grid here, we use a split, for instance, a stereo split and the merge. We want to treat the left and the right channel a bit differently. Um, so we connect these two. And here we hook up some all-pass devices. Um, something like this. This could be interesting. Um, maybe... Maybe a second second block here of this something like this okay so now in between these two blocks we can also use maybe a chorus pretty slow modulated chorus Okay, then we maybe want to use some kind of feedback. So I'm using a long delay. Going out into the long delay here. Maybe choosing not here um, pretty slow or pretty fast delay time. I'm probably going for three uh, 16 notes of as delay. And then I'm using a blend. Oops, blend here. And then I'm blending in basically the output here into the input. And this is more or less my feedback knob here. So I can call this um, feedback. Um, this is input one. Okay, let's, let's see how this sounds. Okay, so maybe we need here some high pass and low pass things before we go back. Um, high pass, low pass, let's see, maybe 300 or 500 here, okay, not that steep, um, maybe feedback here a bit less, let's see. Maybe go here. It's 
way too blurry, a bit too blurry. We mix in here the reverb. Okay, so I need this more, more lush. Let's see what we can do. Maybe we can introduce here some more blurring with an all pass. Um, maybe SVF here, an SVF filter. Um, disable it the pre chord and we have um, let's see we have, we are in your we have a scale of D sharp minor right so we can tune the, the the reverb to that so maybe go to C one here use a pitch quantizer dial in the scale of D sharp minor connect this here to the input of the SVF so we are on the on the frequencies of the scale basically use a value. And then also use here a voice stacking to duplicate basically this voice multiple times. So maybe let's go to five. So we duplicate this five times. And on each voice, we tune this to a different note. So let's go to um, voice stacking here. Um, zero to one. Okay. Use here macro. Because we can now increase here the resonance for all voices. This works nice. And maybe we can also randomize a bit here the pitch drift. Um, polyphonic, yeah. And we slowly modulate the cutoff just a tad. Maybe you can also use a delay here and create some kind of modulation in there. I take the same. And uh, maybe here the feedback is still too much. Oh yeah, we can also use the voice stack to change some all pass delay settings here. Maybe we take this one here and just slowly increase. So every voice basically has a different all pass delay setting here. Let's go to 500 here. Okay. And maybe um, low pass, high pass here at the end. Something like this. It's maybe not the best reverb, but kind of works. Could also introduce here a bit of movement. Let's see how this sounds. Yeah. 
Randomize. Synchronize this to maybe too fast. Half note. Uh, maybe we can switch this here to XB and use your different bandpass filter. And put a straight normal delay 2 here at the end. Nice. Let's see how this sounds when I slow this even more down. Of course we have so many notes here playing and there's so much reverb between the notes so maybe slow this down into 4. So we can also change here a bit of the envelope settings. Go down to 8. Okay, so now that we have this, we can use dice or two dice modules. And every time we trigger this node here, we trigger also these dice modules. And then we change the envelope settings. Boing. Maybe this is the fastest setting here. And then we open up. Delay times. Or maybe use a different set here so we have different combinations. Nice. can also introduce some bit of uh, pitch drift here. That's just a random module. Eight notes. Polypolar. Uh, bipolar. Uh, three. Quarter notes. Okay, let's see. Let's see when we change the wavetable how this sounds. I think it sounds nice so far for a nice uh, background drone. Maybe too fast, already too many notes, but... Let me pull this down here a bit, loudness-wise. Okay, so this is the drone. And that's the first track. Maybe go to Polycent here and bring in some kind of pedal tone or the, the root note basically of the track. Let's go to multiple. Go to loop mode. Okay, 
Let's bring in the dominant in the fourth. Let's bring in some modulation. Okay. There's a pet sound. Uh, maybe a bass sound, so use for use polymer. It's probably also the root note. This time, instead of I'm a bit lazy here with the, with the notes. Make it a small little pulse, so we use a repeater. Maybe use here the oil clip mode. Use this a monophonic mode, so we don't have overlapping notes. Unison here for the upper tones. Uh, maybe speed this up a bit here. And every time we hit a note here, yeah, we hold this. I don't need to have this polyphonic. And maybe a bit of delay. And let's push this here to the edge. Go to minus three. Maybe an arpeggio. Um, and go to phase four. And use the same note. 
This time we use multi node to create more nodes of that. So maybe uh, suspended. Low modulation, not polyphonic. I did the tune near the oscillator so we have a stereo effect. And maybe we pitch this one octave higher. This is the arpeggio, arpeggiator. So, nice. Um, what else? Maybe you can introduce your kick drum. Maybe you can also use the um, note repeater here for this. So we go for repeat, note repeat. Quantizer. And tune it until it sounds good. <laughs> nice. So a bit of uh, sound design here for the kick drum. filter out here the mid parts of the kick okay some hi hats just use it the same technique here faster. And do some heavy randomization here. Yeah? Maybe we go for a step step mod. So we have the same sequence. wrong. I've always a bit problems with uh, moving things around in Bitwig and then Bitwig collapsing different things and then I put it on something else and so on. Something like this, right? I, I move it over here, see it, now it collapses, this this bottom one and then 
I put it somewhere else, so it's a bit, yeah, a bit strange sometimes. Mm, okay, what else can we modulate this one here? Yeah? Second one, a uh, third one. Oh, yeah. Resonance is always nice. Maybe modulate the frequency. And different length here. So we don't have overlapping sequences. Maybe some delay. the diffusion here down the zero gives you this nice it sounds almost like a grain grain delay but it's probably just all pass device all pass um delays can we bring in some more repeaters um repeat So step mode at the end from the sequence here. Bring in some Two notes, uh, 32 steps. Let's cut off here at the low end. some real hi-hats here. Um, maybe you go for XO. And uh, search some hi-hat samples. like this. Maybe a bit quieter. It 
So we have a nice little background loop here. Already, already a bit modulating all the time. So we got different, um, yeah, different combinations, and different alterations, a lot of variation in there. Um, maybe can bring in arcade. Bring in some vocals or something, something organic. Let's go to hooked here and choose something random, maybe. Something like this. Download this. I can switch this to minor and D sharp minor. Then trigger this from the keyboard. Put some reverb on it. Tweak this. Um, I think there's um, is this the playback setting here. Yeah, off speed. Maybe a foot on there. of delay so nobody hears what what's actually about can we pitch this up yeah i think here with octave Not the best idea, but so maybe we bounce this before we fiddle around with this for hours so uh, I just bounce in place yeah probably is probably the best we have the real effects on it bounce in place bam I think we can disable this here
we need maybe a random mod here, a pretty slow one, bar, maybe over six bars, a slow fade of this envelope mod. So sometimes the arpeggiator blends out and blends in over time pretty slowly. Maybe we build a reverb for this, fx grid. Um, let's see, let's use a recorder here. Um, trigger. And maybe use chance so we don't record all the time, only sometimes. A bit like it's a bit like a grain delay, small one. Um, so we need to blend in and blend out here, probably to get rid of this click. Um, maybe instead of using these triggers, I use a phase module here and use a uh, scalar. Um, get a faster phase output here, maybe to eight. And then use an, a logic operator. Um, um, every time this is not zero, we have an, we have here a trigger. So basically every time this is zero or not zero, which is 99% of the times, um, we have a trigger out here. And only when the phase signal is at zero, we have an off switch off. So we have recording all the time. And then at, at the start of the sequence, we slowly or fast switch off. Okay, so we have this and you can bring in the chance here again. So it's not happening all the time. But the playback is happening all the time. Let's see how this sounds. Uh, I think we need to um, re-trigger this here, probably. Um, so when this is zero, then re-trigger, maybe something like this. We have to use a constant here for some reason. Yeah, 
Yeah, now we get the signal, yeah. The recording is delayed. I think this is always a problem with the seems a logic delay here. But this makes no sense that it stops here basically in the middle of the sequence. And then we use a mirror here. and attenuate so we can slowly fade this in and out. This was the main idea. And then maybe switch this here to logarithmic. So it's on all the time or mostly all on and, you know, goes very fast back to zero. Only for the click. <laughs> So, okay, we have this. I don't know how, it's, how it works when we have more of this. Let's go for super massive here just for a test. pretty quiet here because of the mix here maybe you can use it for different things different settings to a different setting here. Let me use the slow machine. So yeah, we can try this in the context. Just play some notes.
also with Bitwig we can of course use here Humanize and change a bit the timing of the notes, also the chance and maybe uh, randomize the velocity. Okay, we randomize here this one too. And all the track needs is probably a clap. Not so not happy here with the arpeggiator. So now I can see that the kick drum is peeking out a bit, but it's you know that's what the kick drum used to do. Maybe bring this down here to the root of the track. I don't know. I have it on G. I think it's okay. What you can do is maybe put a cool force here on the master. Get rid of some, um, some um, resonances. Just put the TB meter on here. We want to have maybe for, for this type of stuff minus 12 or minus 10 Lufts. Analyze this a bit. So we are at around minus 12.5, which is exactly nice. And then we drive this just into an elevate multi band limiter here with the input gain of zero. So we end up exactly with minus 12 LUFs momentary max. You can see uh, some of the kick drums are a bit limited, as expected. Yeah, and all it needs now is kind of an arrangement, but I'm too lazy for this. So I'm saving this and maybe at some point I do something with it. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Have fun on the weekend with Bitwig and uh, see you on Monday. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Oh yeah, um, this track, I'm uploading this to Patreon, of course. If you want to download this, then make sure you subscribe there.